live from the Bill Graham Auditorium in San Francisco. It's the Cube covering Pure Storage Accelerate 2018. Brought to you by Pure Storage. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live at Pure Storage Accelerate 2018 at the Bill Graham Civic Auditorium in San Francisco. I'm Lisa Martin, Sporting Prince today with Dave Vellante sporting the Who, but I'm sandwiched, most importantly, between two Celtics fans, and the Warriors are across the bay. We'll save that for after the conversation. So we want to welcome to theCUBE for the first time Ken Ringdahl, the VP of Global Alliance Architecture from Veeam. Welcome. Great, thank you, Lisa. Listen, truth be told, we're afraid of the Warriors, okay? We really don't want to play <laughs> oh, the Warriors. Oh, really? No, I mean, <laughs> right. And we're not afraid of many people in Boston, but I don't know. They look pretty good. Well, I appreciate the honesty. That's, well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, although they lost last night, Right? We're going to start the sports talk now. Yeah. <laughs> Iguodala was out. They showed some fallibility. <laughs> uh, so, anyway. We digress to... Uh, we'll be back to it later on <laughs> in this segment. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, so, so you just fresh off Veeam on last week. We're still, we're impressed that you have a voice. You've recovered from that. Tell us a little bit about some of the, the things that are new with Veeam and Pure. So just, just a month ago in April, new integration between Veeam availability, availability platform and Pure Storage Flash Array to deliver business continuity, agility, intelligence for the cloud era. Expand a little bit upon that. Yeah, sure. I mean, this is you know really this this integration with Pure Storage. We in in the Veeam Backup and Replication product, end of last year, we introduced this new functionality called Universal Storage API. Um, and what this really is is a way for us to enable our partners to take control of their destiny a little bit more. Uh, it's a program we invite our partners into. You know, Pure is one of the first that we integrated with and invited into the program very early. We announced this last year, and we've now finished the integration. As you mentioned, we announced it last month. It's now been, been out there, and I think uh, the number I heard earlier today is we've already had a couple hundred uh, downloads and deployments, so that's just great adoption of, and, and just shows the pent-up demand for that. Uh, but what we've integrated is the ability for our partners, our storage partners in particular, to integrate with our storage snapshot technology to really offload uh, the, the snapshot from the, from, the, from the VMware side and really put more of it on the storage side and take it really off the production environment. And so it's, it's a better together story where you know, we take the, the, the feature that we've introduced in Veeam Backup and Replication, and Pure built this plugin, and you know, they, they integrate with their own APIs, and we, we jointly test and, and develop that and release that plugin. And they can install it with Veeam Backup and Replication, and it, and it really takes, as I mentioned, it takes that load off the production environment. So that snapshot, you know, without this integration, it's a VMware snapshot, that snapshot stays open as long as the backup is, uh, which can be minutes and you know, tens of minutes, potentially, for a large system. Uh, but now we shrink that down literally to just seconds. So we take a VMware snapshot, we take the pure snapshot, we close the VMware snapshot. And that's, you know, typically it's like 10 to 12 seconds long where, as opposed to the you know, minutes and even tens of minutes from before. So really it's really offloading a lot of that you know, backup impact and we're able to do it in a very secure quiesce uh, fashion from the production environment. It, it, let's, let's roll back and understand that a little bit better, Ken, if you could explain sure. it to us and our audience. In the uh, you know, 2000, well that's eight, seven, eight, nine time frame, virtualization, VMware in particular, started to take hold. And you ended up replacing a bunch of physical servers with virtual servers, which was awesome because all those physical servers were underutilized, except for one major workload, which was backup. So when you didn't want to do the backup, you didn't have enough resources. Veeam's ascendancy coincided with that trend. So there was a simplicity component, but it seems like what you're describing now is, is another instantiation of offloading that bottleneck. Um, so what, what was the journey sure. to Veeam's efficiency in a virtualization environment? Yeah, if you look at that journey, and, and you know, Veeam really grew up in the virtualization age, right? So um, you know, backup prior to, to VMware virtualization was really all agent-based, it was physical, right? So everything was over the wire. And, and Veeam went and said, hey look, you know, we, we see VMware really sort of growing and we see that, that trend towards virtualization, right? And at this point, what's the world? 95% virtualized. I mean, at this point, the only workloads that aren't virtualized are really legacy workloads. And so, you know, we made a significant leap forward uh, in a data protection stance by integrating with the hypervisor. So instead of, you know, offloading that into the individual guests, right? The Windows guest, the Linux guest, 
we said, okay, we're going to go to the hypervisor, right? And we're going to do this in an agentless fashion, so you don't have to go and visit every little, every system that you're looking to back up. That was sort of the first step, mm -hmm. right? Now what we're saying is, we can do that, do even better, and we can offload the hypervisor and offload that to the storage system. So we can, we can have a very small impact on the hypervisor, really minimize that, and now really put that workload on the storage system, which has a lot of extra you know, cycles and availability, and we, can, and we can go straight to the backup environment, and not through the VM or through the hypervisor to get there. So the VMware admins, they don't like snapshots because it's overhead intensive, um, it clogs up their system, if, if you will. This capability makes that transparent or relevant to them? It, right? it does, it minimizes it to, to such a small degree that it's a blip, you know, it's a little blip on the radar as opposed to, you know, that, that when, when you snapshot a VM, you know, you're essentially quiescing that VM, so everything sort of slows down for a very short period of time, and what happens is that disk, it, it spawns another virtual disk. So while that snapshot is open, this other virtual disk is being written to, and then when you close that snapshot, and you remove that snapshot, that disk gets merged back in, right? This is, this is you know, generally how VMware snapshots work. And what we're saying is we're going to minimize as much as we possibly can the data that goes in there. So if you think of a running virtual machine that's merging, if you're merging back in a gigabyte disk versus a, a disk that has 10 megabytes, you know, that's going to be really, really quick as opposed to you know, the other, you know, if, you, if you keep that snapshot open for a long period of time, that merge operation and it just slows things down and we're trying to minimize that impact on the system. So business benefits, I, I, I get the performance improvements that this uh, integration with Pure facilitates. Mm -hmm. If we think of this in the context of digital business transformation where companies that are doing it well have the ability to um, really glean actionable insights from their data to be able to drive you know, new products and get products to market faster. Are you, is this actually going to facilitate a company being able to get new products to market faster? A absolutely, so there's a, there's a feature inside of Veeam Backup and Replication we call Data Labs. And what Data Labs is the ability to take a production snapshot, uh, in this case we're, we're, we're talking about a, a pure snapshot, and be able to stand that up in a sandbox environment, and you can run dev test, you can apply your Windows patches in, a, in, a, in an environment that literally matches production. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a key differentiator. Uh, it's a key differentiator for Veeam and it's enabled by the pure snapshot integration that you have this environment and, and it's even like, even if you have an infected system, you go put it over in data labs, it's sandboxed, so you can put it in a private network so it doesn't have any connectivity. So if you have a worm or some other ransomware, you can, you can run analytics, you can run diagnosis on any of that and, and not worry about it sort of infecting any other environment, nor does it, have a, uh, does it put workload on your production environment. So you get Patch Tuesday, right? And we all know that Windows patches don't always go as, 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 as they seem, right? So Data Labs, let's, let's take that pure snapshot, let's stand up a, a virtual environment, which exactly matches production, let's test that, that patch, right? And then we have confidence there, so when we go to production, we, we have confidence because we've already done it. We've already run that in production. And so there's, there's a lot of value in, in, in that capability. So we were, were at Veeamon last week, fresh off the Kool-Aid injection. Uh, it's all orange here, it was all green at, uh, <laughs> at Veeamon in Chicago. The messaging there was all about uh, multi-cloud and, 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 and hyper-availability in this, in this multi-cloud world. We're hearing a lot about cloud-like function here, but a lot of on-prem uh, uh, activity, of course, multi-cloud includes on-prem. So I wonder if you could dovetail your messaging last week, what you're seeing in the field and what you're seeing with the partnerships with, with companies like Pure. Yeah, no question. I mean, uh, the, the, the Veeam platform, and, and, and really, I mean, you saw it last week at Veeam on, we talked about sort of private cloud, public cloud, and our ability to orchestrate and, and really stretch across all those environments. And we know that, you know, customers all the way from SMB all the way up to enterprise, right? They have, you know, they have remote offices, branch offices, some of them use the cloud, some of them use multiple data centers, and, and really they need their data protection to be able to stretch across those environments. They don't want point solutions in, in each of those locations. They want a platform that they can trust and have visibility, right? That's one of the, one of the five stages that we talked about about hyper-availability last week is visibility. They want visibility across those clouds. They want, you know, step uh, phase two is aggregation. They want to be able to aggregate all these different places, right? And, and that's what we, we, we provide our customers customers with the platform is backup, visibility, aggregation, right, orchestration, automation, 
Um, and, and we provide them you know, on different stages of that journey for our customers. We have different product services and, and integrations actually with our partners that really help our customers along that journey. I, I, we know from our research, uh, the, the crew at Wikibon does some great work on, on this. We know that data protection and, and orchestration are moving up on the list of CXO priorities. At the same time, you know, for a lot of uh, IT practitioners who are under real budget constraints, it's like trying to sell more insurance to a 24-year-old. So those are sort of two countervailing trends. Yes. What are you seeing in the marketplace? Um, I mean, what we're seeing is, is customers, you know, down, downtime is, is really, it's gone, right? I mean, I think, you know, last week we heard uh, in, in one of our keynotes, you know, you roll back a couple of years, you, you were talking about availability in terms of, four, of five nines, right? Um, now you, it's, it's, it's zero. I mean, people don't talk about downtime because, you know, downtime can't exist and, and, and customers need that, that sense of security and availability. You know, it, it will happen. I mean, let's face it. I mean, even, you know, Amazon, the best data centers in the world go down, right? Was, there's been some notable S3 outages, but it's about how fast can you recover, right? And, and you're talking about low RPOs. I mean, one of the things that, you know, this week here at Pure Accelerate, we're hearing a lot about rapid recovery, right? Flashblade and the ability, and, and you, you take rapid recovery and Flashblade, you combine that with the Veeam platform and our instant VM recovery, and you can get to near zero downtime, near zero time recovery in your environments, right? To really provide that security, and, and let's face it, time is money for a lot of our customers, right? So the, the longer they're down, the, the more time they're losing money, they need availability, and RPOs are, are near zero these days, so. The, the other thing, if I may, just follow up, one follow up, is the other thing our research shows is that, that the, the average Fortune 1000 company over a three or four year period is leaving literally you know, billion plus dollars on the table because of poorly architected backup or inadequate backup. Um, so that's a huge opportunity for you and others, obviously. Yes. Uh, there's a lot of uh, opportunity right now for, for vendor churn. That's the other thing our research shows is that people aren't wed to their backup and recovery vendor. So uh, does that resonate with customers? Are they, uh, uh, because of digital, for example, are you seeing that tipping point, that critical mass occur? And then if you could tie that into sort of your partnership with Pure, I'd be interested sure. in that. Sure. Yeah. No. No doubt about it. We're seeing we're seeing customers. You know, they they want that flexibility and that portability. One of the things we do with our platform, uh, it's one of our unique selling features. Is is it is agnostic, right? And I'll I'll tie it back to Pure in a moment. But right. you know, when we when we back up, we back up in a in a in a storage agnostic fashion. So any any Veeam backup that lands on a on a disk on a tape anywhere can be reconstituted, can be re-imported. So even if you have a full disaster scenario. We can go, you know, stand that back up somewhere else and, and fully, you know, fully consume that backup and, and restore it. And we have direct restore capabilities, so you know, we, can, we can port those, those backups and, and direct restore them, for example, a direct restore to Azure, for example. Um, so it's, you know, that flexibility and portability is extremely valuable. Now, bring that back to Pure, some of the things we're doing around rapid recovery, around the snapshot integration we talked about, is we're really enabling customers to have high performing primary storage environments, high performing secondary storage environments, and really bring that together in, in a way that works. You know, we talked about multi-cloud, right? You know, remote data centers and, and work across and, and aggregate and, and give visibility. That's, that's really where you know, the Veeam and Pure story together becomes really strong because you get an incredibly high performing primary and secondary with with a, a highly flexible, portable, um, secondary, you know, data protection environment, and you get the capability to get to the cloud. You know, if that's, you know, for, for DR, a lot of customers, you know, are looking to the cloud for DR because it's, it's, you know, they don't have to stand up infrastructure there. It's, it's when they need it, they spin it up, and then they can bring it back. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of value there. So I hear a lot of har harmony, but I actually read recently online that a different analyst firm called the Pure Veeam uh, relationship a, a match of opposites. Now they say opposites attract, and you've done a great job of talking about, about in, in the integration. Do you agree it's, a, it's a, a good blending of opposites, and if so, what's that kind of symbiotic benefit that we um, both bring to each other. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that I saw that report, but it, I mean, what I would say from, you know, th there's, there's a lot of synergy. I mean, we're, we're, we're growing at a very rapid rate. I think when, we, when I look at Pure and I look at Veeam, you know, we grew 36% last year. I think Pure is growing at like 50% year over year. We have MPS scores. We're, our MPS score is 73. We're really proud of that. 
the, the pure NPS score, I, I think I started the keynote, was 83. I didn't think it could it's, be higher it's than incredible. 73. I mean, that's it's, just, yeah. it is incredible. I think, there, and there's a lot of synergy, the size of our organizations, I think the age of our organizations, the aggressiveness we have, uh, some of we have joint competitors uh, in the market, so I think a lot of th there's a lot of synergies between you know where we are as an organization and where and uh, as Veeam and, and where Pure is um, there. Uh, the the op I, I I wish I I wish I read the article uh, in terms of the opposites because I'd I'd love to understand. Uh, personally, as a as a longtime analyst, I would say the similarities are greater than the differences. Sure, sounds like um, it. You're both about a billion dollars, you're both growing it, you know, let's say call it 35, 40% a year. You're both pursuing platforms. You're both like really aggressive. You're, you're insanely passionate about your customers and winning. Uh, so, and you like colors. You like green, they like orange, so. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> All right, we got we to gotta talk a little Speaking sports Speaking of green. Here. We got we to talk <laughs> a little talk Celtics green. I'm going to start somewhere else though because I asked this question of a number of, of folks at Vimon. If you were, Ken, if you were uh, Robert Kraft, would you have traded Tom Brady? No. no Elaborate. I no. Uh, I, I think when you, when you look at, a, a, the guy was the MVP of the league last year, so that, that by itself stands on its own. Um, but you, you have to look, and it's, you know, the Patriots have always been about sort of you know, trading or moving on a year too early versus a year too late, so you could make that case with Tom Brady. But I think there's always exceptions, and when you look at, I mean, he is basically like a, a, a adopted son of, of Robert Kraft and the organization. He's brought five Super Bowls. He's basically he built Patriot Place. You know, on the, you know, Robert Kraft built ba Patriot Place on the backs of Tom Brady and Bill Belichick to that extent. But you know, how do you how do you move on from from someone that's that's given that's brought you so much success that is that has been under market, you know, paid under market, so that they can go and 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 do other things and have flexibility with the cap and I just don't know how you can move on from that. So, you know? uh, that's consistent now. I think it's four for four of people we've asked, Boston fans, so they'll appreciate that feedback. Uh, let's talk a little hoops. You know, Celtics, we were feeling pretty good, up two zip, now it's tied 2-2. Houston, Golden State, tied 2-2. Those two teams have proven they can win on the road. Celtics haven't proven that yet. What, what are your thoughts on that series? Yeah, so um, certainly Cleveland came storming back. I think the, uh, the stories of the, the downfall of the Cavs were, were clearly over-exaggerated. Um, they, they came back in a big way. Uh, I think the Celtics started to figure out the Cavs in quarters two, three, and four. They got themselves in a big hole in, in, in the first quarter in the last game. Um, so I, you know, I feel good. The Celtics are 9-0 at home this year in the postseason. Um, you know, they've got, it's bas basically a best of three, and they have two of them at home. So the Cavs will have to break serve if they want to win the series. If they're lucky enough to get through, you know, to the finals, which would be, which would be unbelievable, um, do they have any shot against the Warriors? Uh, so I, I think to say they have no shot is, is probably going a little gotta too far. Got to play the game. But, you know, <laughs> you've you got to play the games. And, and the Celtics traditionally have matched up well against the Warriors. I mean, last year, the Celtics actually came into Oracle and, and broke, I don't know, what was it, like a 50-game home winning streak or something. So, you know, and, th and that was a team that didn't have Kyrie or Gordon Hayward, and I know they're, they're still out, so, you know, the, the future looks bright for the Celtics, but in the context of this year's finals, certainly if I were a betting man, I'd be putting my money behind the Warriors, but, you know, I, I, don't, I don't doubt that, that Brad Stevens could come up with a scheme that could, you know, steal a couple of games and, and make people you know, in the Bay Area feel a little uneasy. We'd love to see a non-LeBron final yes. you know, for yeah, change. Yeah, I think as the words, you know. we, we Sorry, would Brendan. the Celts. A <laughs> Sorry, little buddy. diversity, not, yes. you know, three years in a row we've had the same thing, so <laughs> I'll extend my support to the Celtics in honor of both of you guys. All right, and, and we can talk if they get to the finals, then we can, you know, we can take it from there. I can't there. imagine what the day after the Super Bowl was like this last year for both of you. We won't go there. I still haven't recovered, so. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, Ken, thanks so much Great. for stopping by. Congrats on being a CUBE alumni now. We yeah. look forward to seeing you at VMworld um, in just a few months' time. Yes. Great. Thanks, we'll, Ken. We'll be there for sure. All right. All right. For Dave Vellante, right. I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from Pure Accelerate 2018. Stick around. Dave and I will be back with a wrap in just a moment.